the Gamo P430. No, it's nothing new, but it's new to me. And this is great because I get the opportunity to do what I do and put it through its pace. I find this kind of interesting because you don't see this very often on too many CO2 uh, pellet pistols. Pest control. Interesting. At least I thought so. Anyway, let's open her up. Without injuring ourselves. Or myself, I should say. All right, first thoughts. That's uh, cheap plastic. Again, non-adjustable sights. No white on the front sight. Got to take care of that. All right, the magazine does drop free. It's a stick mag, eight rounds at each end. Cross bolt safety. Does have a metal trigger. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay, so it gets negative points. Press control. I hope it's accurate for pest control. We'll find out. Um, I, I hate that they put that there and there's no adjustable rear sight. So, I mean, I don't know who does the marketing for these things, who writes this up, but I think they do an absolutely horrible job. Just my thoughts. All right, uh, so... Okay, so it's a cheap pistol, non-blowback, 495 feet per second with alloy pellets. We'll test that. Uh, well, first thing I've got to do is uh, take care of this front sight and do what I do, put some white electrical tape on it. And then we will do a, a velocity test with alloy pellets. And uh, you know what? We'll do some lead pellets too. Test the accuracy. And, uh, you know... We'll test this right here, this pest control part right there, and talk about it at the end. I've completed putting the white tape on the front sight to help me see it better. Uh, I'm going to do the velocity test. The two pellets I'm going to use, first one will be the Discontinued Winchester Maximum Velocity Pellet. It's a domed pellet, 4.32 grains. Alloy, of course. And then the other one will be the R10 Match, which is a standard 7 grain lead wad cutter. And we will test that uh, 495 feet per second that it states here with alloy pellets. Uh, with this lightweight pellet, it should have no problems uh, breaking that uh, feet per second range. Let's see. Pistol has been charged and the temperature is currently 87 degrees. This first up is the Winchester Maximum Velocity Pellet. Wow, and I'm actually surprised we did not break that 495 feet per second with a 4.32 grain pellet. Kind of disappointed. Next up is the seven grain lead pellet.
All right, so seems to me that that 495 feet per second with alloy pellets is a, uh, it's a typo. Somebody messed that one up. Or I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But uh, yeah, I didn't reach that. So I'm going to attempt this uh, velocity test again. Uh, this time what I did was I brought the CO2 cartridge, put it in the, in the gun, and let it sit for a few minutes. Um, the first velocity test I did, you know, I took the CO2 cartridge directly out of a air-conditioned house, put it in the gun, and fired it. Also, the other change I did was I brought the chronograph a little closer, and we're going to see if that uh, makes a difference. I'm still using the 4.32 grain uh, Winchester maximum velocity pellet. And let's see if we break that 495 this time. And we still did not break that 495. So uh, this pistol, I don't, I can only account for this one, but it is underpowered and not reaching the velocity stated on the package. But you know these things happen. And next up will be the 10 yard accuracy test. Targets down range of 10 yards. Want to fire five shots. So far, I've only fired 15 shots out of this pistol since I've opened it. Uh, this is the second CO2 cartridge, which had the last five shots fired over the chronograph. And uh, so we'll see what this thing can do. I've got no adjustments to this pistol. We'll see what it do at 10 yards. The ammo I'm using is the RWS R10 Mac pellet. And let's go have a look. First off, not a bad group. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Excuse me. But way too low. My front sight was here. Six o'clock hole on the red center. And uh, it's shooting, what's that? Uh, two, two and a half inches low. Again, you know, that can easily be corrected. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. Uh, much better than a lot of uh, crossing pistols I've shot. So initially, I said that I was thinking about doing a uh, penetration test with this pistol. Uh, I've decided against that, being that I'm kind of unimpressed with the velocity, but that's another story. So I got some cans set up on the ground down there. I'm going to be roughly 11 yards away 
and I'm going to see if I can take them all down. And I'm going to remember to try to remember to aim about two inches high. Well, I did hit them all. The Gamma P430. Uh, my final opinion. I mean, you really can't expect much from a $40 CO2 pistol. And that's what this is, a $40 CO2 pistol. Um, I will say I like the accuracy. Although it is a little low, that can easily be fixed. You know, um, I could shave off a little off the front sight, or I could do just, you know, disassemble the pistol and try to bring the barrel up a little bit. Or, even easier, you can just mount, a, mount an optic to the top of it if you wanted to. Uh, I personally won't do that unless. You know, if there are enough folks interested, I will do a video of me uh, disassembling this pistol and altering the valve to get it over 500 feet per second, mounting an optic to it, and doing another test. But, you know, that's only if enough people are interested in seeing that. I will do it. Other than that, like I said, Gamo P430, a $40 gun, uh, does not reach its accuracy, I'm sorry, its velocity as stated on the package, but, you know, for 40 bucks, the accuracy is not bad, a little low, but not bad, and uh, that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually kind of surprised, well, I shouldn't say I'm surprised, it does have a metal trigger. And the trigger pull is not bad, it's really smooth. So, that's it.